seriously, Tuesday. Welcome to Tuesday. So la last week uh, when I started this, uh, it was interesting, <laughs> and I have to admit I was I was attempting to do that. Well, it was very spontaneous, and uh, I decided to do it with my uh, phone because that's what I had on me at the time. So if you could have seen the setup, I had my white bucket hat on the dashboard with uh, a glove underneath with my phone sitting on the top and it, it just didn't work out very well. And I, I really knew that I probably should have waited um, and actually used my GoPro. So. I'm hoping that this actually uh, turns out better from a visual standpoint today. And um, if there is some bouncing and shaking, man, Michigan roads are terrible. So um, I uh, apologize on behalf of the Michigan Department of Transportation. And um, this time of year, we get lots of potholes and uh, all of the expansion joints are swollen and it's just, a, it's a mess, but anyway. So today I want to talk about um, another book that I uh, recently finished, and um, it's a uh, it's a book called Turner, and this is about um, about uh, Joseph Mallard William Turner, R. A. and um, another example of uh, something that just really took me by surprise. You know, I mean, I I had heard the name Turner and stuff. Uh, growing up and I'm going to show you a, uh, let me show you a cover of the book and I'll also link to it in the description now I listen to books on Audible so um, as I mentioned last time you know I, I have I have a total of two hours in the car every day uh, just driving and so um, I can plow through some books um more than I can actually afford so I, I listen to I listen to them more than once typically until my next uh, until my next until I get another point uh, after my uh, subscription is paid each month because then you can buy whatever book you want regardless of price or size uh, with your point so I tend to save it for that and uh, that just stretches uh, stretches a dollar a little bit but anyway not, this isn't about this is about me. This is uh, this is about Turner today. So um, I didn't really know who uh, who Turner was, and um, I mean, basically, 1775, I think, is when he was born, and uh, died in uh, 1851, and <clears throat> painted uh, uh, primarily on the. Um, East Coast of England, and uh, to uh, my subscribers who are who actually live in that region where he lived and painted, I'm super jealous. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to get over there and and uh, and paint that area. It just looks uh, it looks phenomenal. And if any of the uh, film Turner was uh, uh, filmed in that area, it's just got to be absolutely spectacular. But what I found interesting about Turner was that he, he, from a very young age, like uh, like age fourteen, um, he was recognized as someone who just had tremendous talent and ability uh, at sketching and drawing, and and uh, and then eventually uh, painted watercolor, to just I mean, literally thousands of watercolors. And of course, then uh, you know later in his life, some of his paintings that he's famous for. One of my favorite uh, is is the one called Temporaire, uh, and I'll show you a picture of that here. What really struck me about uh, uh, Turner when I first started looking at his work was number one was just he was so um, so uh, just taken by the light, and uh, light is something that now. I guess you have to put it in perspective of, you know, living in a maritime 
area, you know, a coastal region where the, uh, you know, you have uh, fog and storms rolling in and, you know, the, the, the sky uh, textures that you can achieve or that you visually see in areas coastal areas like that are so different than uh, than what you see um, like inland like in the middle of the United States or even here in the Midwest and we get some weather systems that are developed just because we are kind of stuck between two lakes here but um, nothing like you would see on a, on a coastal region so so I'm guessing that I mean we've all seen those days where you can't quite see the sun but you know it's there and it and the sky itself is so bright that you can't possibly look at it um, even though this the sun's not actually visible and if any of you tried to look at the uh, eclipse um, when that happened recently through the clouds it was still impossible to uh, impossible to look at it was just so bright and I kind of get the sense in his paintings that that's that's the way he saw the uh, the world around him so And the colors um, and things that he chose to use. I, I mean, he really was preempting what was to follow in uh, Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. And I didn't expect that. Uh, you know, paint um, in that time era. You know, most of them were very were very flat with uh, with. Uh, flat just meaning that you know everything was smoothed out and and uh, very flat in particular edges were probably uh, you know there were more kind of hard edges and everything in his paintings are very soft and um, I can imagine the reaction to uh, what he was trying to do was uh, by the people who were around him who were painting and uh, and think about this he was in the academy uh, the Royal Academy which is the RA designation um, behind his name he was in the academy when he was 14 years old and that's uh, I mean that's just mind blowing so probably I mean people who were in the Royal Academy I mean, they were they were in it to the end of their lives. So, so here you have a 14-year-old boy who's uh, you know learning his trade next to probably people who are in their even their 60s and 70s who've been painting their entire lives. One of the things I really like about this painting, uh, uh, Temporaire, is uh, you know Turner was capturing things that were just really historical in nature and this particular painting when you take a look at it the uh, you know you've got a, a steamship what would probably be considered a tugboat today not a ship it was a steamboat um, that's pulling this wooden um, war hero so to speak from uh, from the British Navy basically towing it to shore to be moored and uh, disassembled and made into furniture and other things uh, and you know that, that he had the that he was conscious and um, in in the in the present enough to to capture the scene I think was was really quite phenomenal um, because it just said something about uh, the painting goes beyond oil paint on a canvas surface. I mean, it, it, it says something about it, a transition in time. It says something about, uh, you know, the, um, the old being set aside for, for new technology and, and, uh, which is, uh, which is really quite, quite interesting. And, um, in the background of that painting, you actually sort of see the, the subdued, subdued, ghosted images of uh, of some sails, and you know, I often wonder if if that's not a 
sort of memory of uh, that particular ship when it was at full sail. Uh, I mean, we don't really know what his original intent was, but um, when I look at it, that's sort of what I what I see in the painting. And um, people people have said that uh, that Turner would hide things um, in his paintings. That if you looked really closely, you could uh, see things um, that that. Uh, were sort of mysterious and uh, hidden in the background or hidden in the, the mist or the smoke or whatever. <clears throat> so starting out as a watercolorist, um, he was not afraid to experiment. And I think there are, there are lessons in, uh, in his approach for all of us. And, um, you know, fear is like huge in, in, in painting. And I know it doesn't sound like, it's like, come on, you're just, you're just standing out in the woods painting stuff. And like, what is there to possibly be afraid of? And it, it, uh, it's interesting because, you know, until you get in front of a blank canvas with a brush and some paints, you don't really completely understand it. But, um, the, voices inside your head <clears throat> and you know I'm not saying that that there are voices in my head well maybe we, we all have voices in our heads right I mean we all hear stuff that our conscience or whatever and you know our, our mind is telling us and, but um there is a uh, there is a fear that comes over, and I think it's a fear of, uh, in most cases, you know, you've you if you've been following me from the beginning, you've heard me talk about what does look like look like, and this is a this is a problem in painting in general, and I, I really think um, because look look like looks different to, to to everybody. I mean, we all have our own sense of of uh of what something what represents something and what something looks like and i mean sure there's like technique and style and and uh usage of color and color harmony and cross compliments and triads and i mean we deal with so many of those things that are technical in nature that you know we don't always think about um concepts as simple as you know what, what does look like look like and in Turner's day, uh, there there was a point here. <laughs> Maybe I'll get to it eventually. Uh, but that's Tuesday Drive, right? I mean, I just I drive and I talk, so um, you don't quite know what's gonna what's gonna pop out of my head at any time. Maybe one of those voices that I was talking about is gonna pop out. But um, <clears throat> the uh, um, he he had this. Uh, uh, ability to go beyond beyond what the current day said look like is and um, you know things were painted pr primarily to, to be um, representing you know exactly what they were so uh, portraits had to have a very accurate likeness and um, uh, the color of something had to be what that object actually was. And there was no interpretation of uh, color. Like the statement hadn't really been made yet um, that, uh, you know, color had these emotional qualities. And so uh, everything was painted to represent it as, as it was. And there was great um, technical skill and you know, you had to learn a certain way. You had to paint a certain way. And, well, man, Turner just threw all this out the window. And and I thought that was really cool because how he painted. So when he approached his oil painting, it was similar in nature at first to um, to how he painted watercolor. Uh, uh, there were um, just these amazing washes of color. And then he would do some, uh, some areas of impasto that, uh, that were really quite... 
quite new um, to this uh, to, to that era of painting. It, but anyway, his technique was adventurous, and it, it it was without fear, in my opinion. And he he could just stand there and put the paint on as he saw it, and um, didn't really and maybe being so successful at such a young age, maybe you're not as hindered later on. Um, but it seems to me, anyway, that he was undaunted by uh, whatever level of acceptance or rejection came of his work. He he still followed his own path. And, and I have to say I'm, uh, I'm extremely grateful that, um, you know, that I've discovered him. Um, and I really... I enjoy looking at his work. I love that he's a revolutionary and um, that he um, blazed his own trail both in uh, <clears throat> both in technique and, and uh, subject matter and um, and he, he was basically a, a early 1800s impressionist painter to, to an extreme uh, manner. And I just really admire that and respect that. And, uh, and you know, as I study him more, I'm sure that, you know, he will become uh, uh, one of my favorites. And his success was not predicated on the fact that he did what everybody else did. Um, his, his success was sort of scratched out of the dirt using his own methodology. So, um, but later in his life, he was offered this huge sum of money for, for, uh, for all of his work, and he turned it down. And as a matter of fact, his will, uh, after he uh, passed away, his will was contested for a long time because he actually left uh, a couple thousand paintings and thousands and thousands of watercolors. Um, basically, he wanted it to go to... Uh, he wanted it to go to England, and uh, he wanted it to be on display for um, for the public. And these are the things that he cared about. And he he wanted a lot of his money um, used to um, support artists who were um, who were uh, struggling and had uh, you know had fallen on hard times and things like that. So. Um, you know these. Uh, I think those are those are noble requests, and and um, the fact that he ch he tried to make a path so that his art would not be um, you know tucked away for only those who could afford it to be able to view it, and uh, he really cared about the fact that he wanted it to be out in the public and wanted people to to uh, to be able to see it. I think it was just remarkable and uh, the fact that he wanted some of his money set aside to take care of artists who were struggling um, is uh, is also uh, shows uh, the the deep compassion that he had for uh, people that not, maybe didn't necessarily show up in his in his everyday life uh, uh, because he was kind of you know he didn't speak a lot, and he was probably misunderstood by a lot of people. But anyway, um, I will uh, throw some links down below to where you can see uh, uh, where I think there's some good representations of some of these paintings, and as well a um, uh, link to the book. It's a really, uh, uh, really cool read, and in my case, it was a listen, uh, which most most of my books are listens, but. As you can see, uh, today is kind of foggy and gray, and um, and it uh, totally, totally made sense to me when I got in my car this morning that I was going to talk about Turner because uh, this is a Turner kind of day. All right, so that is uh, that's Tuesday Drive, and um, I hope I uh, hope you enjoyed this and um, that you'll uh, you'll check this out again and the uh i wanted to say thank you for those of you who who uh sent me messages um that you uh
you think this is a good idea <laughs> because man, sometimes you just don't know you know I just try things and I don't know what's gonna happen and, and uh, so um, if you think this is a good idea that makes me really happy so <laughs> um, anyway as always uh, thanks for checking out my videos um, if you're uh, if you're not a subscriber and you're seeing uh, my channel for the first time I invite you to um, subscribe and uh, as a reminder the little bell by the subscribe button if you click that bell that means that you'll get notified every time I post a video 